Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, uh, look at um, assembling parts in an assembly. So we, so I've downloaded this um, this set of VEX parts, okay, and I can show you exactly where that is. This is the curriculum VEX Robotics Com event appendices nine. So all I did was search VEX IPT in Google, and then I went down to Appendix nine Autodesk VEX Robotic Parts Library. These are posted uh, in various locations, so so you should be able to easily find these parts. All right, so um, so we have this these parts in assembly. We place them into the assembly, um, and we're going to go ahead now and um, start to assemble them. So one of the things you might find is you might you might actually have too many parts. So let's say we want to delete one. You can click to a select and then click the delete key on your keyboard. You can right click on a part and then release that right click on delete. Okay, you can also right click and then left click on delete. Okay, there's a couple ways to do it there. All right, so let's say that we just want to concentrate on just a couple of parts here. All right, so the very first thing you're going to talk about is that we don't um, we don't move we don't re like position parts in an, uh, in an assembly. What we do is we constrain the parts and we allow the constraints to determine the, the positions of the parts. So notice that I'm not going to be like, you know, trying to move these around at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain them. Okay. Think of constraint as gluing things together. Okay. Now we, we are going to, um, we're going to need to put like, oops. We're going to need to put things like screws and stuff into this to show where things are connected. Um, so we're going to need to go ahead and line some things up, all right? Um, but that's not what's going to hold it together. What's going to hold it together are the constraints that we put in, not like the physical screws that are there. Because notice that I can pass these items through each other, okay? So let's take a look at this here. The first thing is when we're positioning this, notice that it really helps to get some perspective. Like it looked like I just moved that straight up in space, okay? But the fact is that you know, a really good way to do it is to get right on end here. So if I want to move this up, see I'm right on end, and then I can right click. Notice how these these parts can actually go through each other. Okay, so there's nothing stopping these parts from going through each other. They're just representations, right? So you can't think of them as physical objects. Okay. So just to get back to what I was saying, we're not going to move them around. We're not going to like rotate them and stuff. Um, we're not going to use like physical things like a screw to hold them together because the screw will just pass right through this and it's more trouble to make things have physical characteristics in Inventor than it is just to work with them as representations. Okay, so let's get to it. So we click on constrain and now notice that we have this types of constraint. What we're going to focus on here is we're going to focus on the mate constraint. So that's the first type and essentially we're either gluing things together like we're gluing faces together or we're making faces coplanar. Okay, so we're making faces occupy the same plane. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one here. We're going to go ahead and select one face. See this face? See how that? See how we get that arrow scrolling up there? Watch what happens here. When I move over this, see that little arrow right there? It's kind of hard to see. Okay, so I've just changed my color scheme to make this more apparent here. So, so I have a mate. I've clicked constrain, so I'm in the constrain cool. I've I've kept it on mate, and now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just gluing these two pieces together, just like you'd put glue on two faces of an object, then put them together. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so notice how I see that red arrow pointing up. Notice when I'm here and I'm on a line, I don't see it, but when I'm on a face, I do. So I click that. I'm going to use my wheel mouse to scroll out, and then I'm going to choose the, the area that I want to, um, to mate it to. Okay, so notice here I'm going to put it on the side of this object right here, and I'm going to click. Now, if you heard that, there's like this sound that is made by Inventor that immediately, uh, you know, it moves the object to satisfy the constraint. We go ahead and click Apply and Close. Okay, now, now look what happens here. Do you see how this looks like I'm moving it around? Okay, it looks like I'm moving it back and forth, but in fact, I'm not. That is now constrained. So let's take a look at it this way. Okay, and notice that I can't move that anywhere but so the two faces are coplanar. Okay, all right, because it has been constrained. So you'll see it right there. See how I can move it back and forth? Oops. So I can move it back and forth, but I can't move it um, 
anywhere else. So, all right, there we are. Okay, so the idea here is that we wanna lock this into place, okay? And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the bottom of this, so we're gonna make the bottom of this flush, all right? So let's go ahead and move in here. So we're gonna click constraint again. Notice that like you can do a lot of constraining just using mate. Okay, this time we're not gonna do mate mate, we're gonna do mate flush, okay? And notice how I'm looking, it's really easy to catch this edge. So notice if I go way in here, notice I can highlight onto the edge of things. Now it's not giving me it right there, but um, so uh, I can highlight on the edge of things, but I don't want to, okay? So you always look for that arrow right there uh, pointing up. So I'm gonna flush the bottom of this, kind of the surface of the bottom of this piece of metal to the bottom of this other piece of metal and click OK. All right. Okay. Now it really appears that this has gone horribly wrong. Okay. But let's, let's go ahead and tilt it around here. All right. And it looks like, whoops, it looks like we got some unexpected results there. So this is pretty well locked in. Okay. But it didn't really, what we wanted to happen didn't really happen there. All right. So let's go ahead and control Z to undo it. Okay, and notice that my uh, constraint, if I click on here and I go down, notice that my constraint and my flush is now here. So notice when I highlight my flush that I just did, okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to uh, the other color scheme here. Just one second. Application settings, colors, and back to winter day. I always forget which is which. All right, let's do this one. Hmm. Okay, so um, so here we have, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off of that flush. Now I could re control Z back to, to do that, but let's just go ahead and right click on it and click delete, and that will delete that flush there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it again. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and go to back to assemble and we're gonna click constrain and it's already on mate and we're gonna select mate flush. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and grab that little part at the bottom there, that, um, that uh, surface there on the bottom of the one part. And then we're gonna get the surface on the bottom of the other part and apply. Okay, and let's see what happened there. All right, so that worked out much better. So let's go ahead and uh, try to drag it around. So what you're gonna do to test your constraints, you're just gonna move things around. Now notice that this can move around still, but it's not moving around much. Now the final thing that we're gonna do here is remember that we want to lock this into place. We wanna lock this piece of metal into place. So we want actually these screw holes to line up because of the fact that that's gonna make our life easier and it's gonna make it look right, right? Because in reality, we would have the screw holes lining up uh, so that we can put things into them later, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna mate flush to go to uh, line these up. So let's go ahead to constrain. We have it on mate, we have it on flush. And now we're gonna go ahead and really get in there, all right, and, and go right onto the side of that hole, mate flush and the second face. Notice how, notice how my one and two arrows here, the one is now not red anymore, but I still have a red arrow and apply. Okay, and at this point, everything is locked in. Okay, so let's try it. So we're gonna go ahead, we click on our front view, we try to drag it, notice how it just comes as one piece, right? If I move anything, both pieces move, they don't move in relation to each other. That means that we are completely locked in, okay? All right, so that is a fully constrained piece there. Okay. All right, so those are, that's our introduction. Let's go ahead and get rid of these other two pieces here. Um, uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and just constrain this other piece. That might be fun. <laughs> well, we don't need to do it for the video. So if you want to delete these, you can just click on them, delete, click, delete, and there we have our two constrained pieces. Okay, go ahead and practice those make constraints and good luck.